The mighty Fraser River is one of the most powerful rivers in all of North America, with nearly 3,500 cubic meters of water draining into the sea every second. But what swims beneath its cloudy surface is a fish perhaps more mighty than the river itself. The mighty Fraser River. That's a long drive. We drove almost 12 hours today and uh, three hours yesterday but we finally made it and looks like the water level is pretty high but we're pretty excited about it it's gonna be an exciting couple days of fishing it looks like we got some nasty weather rolling in a um, couple days of rain so it's gonna be interesting to film we'll be hiding out inside the the jet boat but you know, unpack our gear and get set up we're even actually gonna hit the water tonight so try and get some fish in Most people know me first and foremost as a passionate hunter, but what they might not know is that for the majority of my childhood growing up, fishing was my number one pastime. Sure, I grew up hunting as well, but I always enjoyed fishing more until I started bow hunting when I was 14. Growing up in the Lakeland region of Alberta, we had plenty of lakes to fish and the species selection was fairly decent. But without a doubt in my mind, some of my best childhood memories growing up were nights spent down along the North Saskatchewan River with one of my best friends, Chris. Together, we spent countless weekends camped out on the shores of the river with rods in the water waiting for a special bite. Chris had grown up fishing this particular part of the river with his father, and after his unexpected and sudden passing, we tried to head down there whenever we could, as this particular spot held a ton of meaning. While sitting on the bank waiting patiently for the sound of a bell to ring, we often found ourselves wondering and dreaming about what it would be like to one day hook into a sturgeon like the ones we often saw on TV. Giant river monsters that grew to sizes far too big to even wrap our heads around. We knew the fight that a 40 pound fish could give us, and honestly didn't know if it would even be possible to land one of the 8, 9, or even 10 foot fish often talked about. This past spring, I received a phone call from my good friend and fellow TV show host Scott Bigelow about a last minute opening with one of the most renowned white sturgeon outfitters in all of BC. Jeff Grimolfson is the owner and operator of River Monster Adventures based out of Lillooet, BC, and anybody who's ever thought about fishing the Fraser River has likely heard about them. Each year, they consistently catch and release some of the largest fish in the entire Fraser River system, and Scott didn't have to twist my arm to convince me to join him on the trip.
Yeah, so right here, we'll put on our uh, slider swivel first. And then we're gonna uh, run uh, three or four, five beads. Here, just depending on the size of them. And then we're gonna hook up another swivel, tie that off. The first swivel will be on a slider with the zap strap to a weight. Just allows for the weight to come free if we get hung up. Nick's getting a bite there in the meantime. Uh, we're using uh, these hooks here. About an eight, nine knot circle hook. There, that'll be tied to uh, 150 pound mono. And bam. between bites and then slapping it with it or swimming by and getting in the line. Yeah. Oh, hey, that's a good fish, man. That might be seven. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Vortex Optics, Wood Wheaton Super Center, Covert Scouting Cameras, Old Smokes Coffee, Black Widow Innovations, and the MD of Bonneville. This segment of the show is brought to you by Wood Wheaton Super Center, a proud supporter of our outdoor heritage. I can see if they get out in that rapids though, mm -hmm. it could get interesting oh, yeah. real yeah. quick. That fish is way bigger than I thought he was. Yeah, I thought he was like a little yeah. four footer one. Yeah, no, he's close to seven there. He might still go, yeah. Yeah. That's so cool when they jump out of the water like that. Such a big fish and they just appear. Oh yeah, so neat, man. Now this one wasn't just nibbling on her either. Once he decided to grab her, he took it, eh? Yeah. A couple good taps and you set the hook. Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's his tail. That's a pretty good tail on him. That's a big fish. Oh, yeah. That's a good first fish, bro. That's very good. That's a big fish. Yeah, that's a big fish. There's one second on bottom. Okay. Sorry, just to go here. Yeah, I can come give me a hand. We've been fishing for 10 minutes. And the first fish that we landed is a seven foot four. Matt took us out, we're actually here the first evening and he snuck us out for a few hours and the fish have been active. We had bites all right off the start and hooked into this guy, he come flying out of the water. This is exactly why we came back down. Yeah, this is a big fish. Look at this. One to start the trip with. I can barely put my arm yeah, around him. Look at him. the girth on this fish. It's got over probably a three and a half foot girth on it. We're struggling to hold it up. Right? <laughs> it's heavy. Right now, this is a big fish. <laughs> Great one to start the trip with, boys. Yeah, there's there's a whole bunch more of them down there too. So I think oh. we're in for a good couple days. Chase number two for the night. Yeah, as soon as they decide they want to run, they'll run. Doesn't matter how tight the drag is, hey? Eh? Yeah. Oh, 
like, this is nuts. Anywhere else you think you're snagged and you're Oh, I know. Fine. Just cut it. Yeah, just cut it. During our trip in late May with the boys from Pure Instinct, we were met with some rough weather conditions, along with some of the highest water levels witnessed in years. We tried our best to battle through the rain and we were able to hook into some fantastic fish. Along with the guys from Pure Instinct, we were also joined by Tim Sanford and his dad of Old Smoke's Coffee. Throughout the hunting industry, there may not be a bigger supporter of Canadian hunting television than Tim and Old Smoke's Coffee and it was an absolute blast spending the weekend with such a great crew. We tried to wait it out this morning, but we can't. It's supposed to rain the next couple days, so we're a few hours late, but we're back in the, the riverboat in. Actually, you can see the water came up quite a bit overnight, so. She's been coming down hard. Nick and the boys just put the first boat in, and we're gonna dunk the second one in. And we're gonna head down the river. We got everything all bagged up. We got our rain gear in. A little bit of rain never slowed us down before, so I'm looking forward to it. We had a pretty good taste of it last night. We got a full day today and another full day tomorrow, so let's uh, go catch some big old sturgeons. However, when it was all said and done, I just felt like we weren't able to showcase the full experience through the limited footage that we were able to get in these conditions. Later in the summer, I managed to clear my schedule enough to sneak away for one more quick trip down. The weather was looking gorgeous and the salmon were running up the rivers. All perfect conditions to hook into a giant white sturgeon. Between the two different trips, we had now spent nearly four days in the water, catching a handful of really nice fish each day. But as we pulled into our spot on our final day of our trip, well, we couldn't prepare ourselves for the kind of day that we were about to have. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Mad Ramps, Deluxe Wall Tents, Victory Archery, Top Notch Taxidermy Studio, Fedro Premium Ammunition, High Mountain Seasoning, I Hunter, and Arkin RV. This segment of the show is brought to you by the MD of Bonneville. Lake adventures happen here. Come on. Decent start to the day. We were just set up for a few minutes. We actually switched things up yesterday. We came out late so that we could fish out into the evening. And today we came out early. We we're trying to catch the morning bite. Got to our first hole and we were only down there for a few minutes and hooked into a just kind of another average fish. We don't seem to have a problem finding those, but I mean, don't get me wrong, they're all kinds of fun. But we're looking for something bigger, so we're gonna try and haul them in and pop the hook out and get back down there as quick as we can. been here half hour and that's the second fish. I think Nick, Nick's trying for us this morning. <laughs> okay, none of the fish today have felt small though. That's the problem. I know, it's right? so hard to judge them. Until they come out, give you a look. We haven't got a look at them yet. But I have a feeling this is the fish that we've been chasing for the last two and a half days. We were into them pretty heavy this morning. Got a bunch of six, six and a half footers. Good fish, fun fish, but we've been looking for a monster. And we haven't seen them, but when Nick set the hook on this thing, it was like setting it into a brick wall. 
he didn't budge an inch. And he's just staying low, staying down. We had to pull the anchor up. And as you can see, there's some pretty mean rapids over there. And if he hits them, we're in trouble. But Nick's doing his best to hold us out here. And we're gonna try and steer him away, but there's not much you can do on a big fish like this. This segment of the show is brought to you by Vortex, the force of optics. This segment of the show is brought to you by Deluxe Wall Tents, built in Canada for Canadian conditions. The only time I could even make any ground on him is literally when Nick moved the boat closer to him. I can't even pull on him. I got a loop here on him. Okay. nothing we can do he just dictates the entire play where he wants to go that's where we just follow and we're lucky we got a pretty decent bowl here to play in but if he makes up his mind and heads out to them rapids i know it's full of snags sharp rocks and the more we can keep him here the better it's probably been i don't know maybe 10 minutes already and I think we're in for a long one. The last uh, we been here all morning, we caught six or seven fish already, and none of them we've been, we even really had to consider pulling the anchor to chase, but as soon as Nick set the hook on this one, the first thing he did was hand me the rod and run for the anchor, because we knew we had a fight on. Just like a submarine. Yeah, I am trying. I'd say it's like wrestling your high school girlfriends, but <laughs> I know you've only been with Darcy, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one's a little bigger than her. Got me at the back. Oh, you're good. Big head on him, eh? Yeah, it's a nice fish. Nothing wrong with that. Nice and dark. Big tail. Oh, that thing. That was a fight. Lucky he didn't make it out into the rapids, but I thought we were going to be in trouble. We were able, Nick was some good boat driving, able to keep us in the pool. And we were able to land him right on shore here. Thank goodness. A fish like that, if he gets in the rapids, you're in trouble. Probably gonna see Nick just got a scan on him, so he's been tagged before, right? Yep, he's got a chip. He's got a chip, so we'll be able to tell when he's been caught last, how much he's grown, and they can submit all that data. And we'll grab another measurement on him, and then we'll update it. But look at the big, long tail on him. A big old head on him. And the gut, the girth on them is the craziest part. And it's weird, you can catch a six foot fish that's fat, and then you can catch a seven foot five yeah. that's skinny. And like I said, we were actually just talking about it's all genetics, and yeah. some of these fish are. Uh, he's got a big head on him. Like that. I don't think he's a young fish. No, that's a ginormous head. Yeah. That's a fish that might not get much bigger. By the end of that last day, we ended up with 18 fish landed to the boat and we had hooked into somewhere around 25. To be honest, 
We likely could have caught more, but our arms just couldn't take it any longer. It was a day on the water that we will likely never match, and it was good enough to set the record for the summer with the most fish landed in a day for Nick and the rest of the guides. The next day, Devin and I spent some time relaxing and checking out some of the local areas around Lillooet. We explored a few creeks and caught some beautiful rainbows on the fly rod before it was time to venture home. <laughs> 